today on Monkey Life. A new species for the park, but it doesn't all go according to plan. Actually just angry more than anything that we're taking control of their home. A lesson in table manners from Oshin. She knows much more than the kids do, and they are kind of watching and learning. And the capuchins are becoming a lot closer. If you want to know if someone does like you, flirting is always a good way to start. Monkey World, tucked deep in the English countryside, is the largest sanctuary of its kind on the planet. The team, led by Dr Alison Cronin, rescue and rehabilitate abused and neglected primates from all over the world. Last little egg into the forest, where we're really pushing the limits here to make all of this happen, so it's a really lovely team effort. The park provides a home for more than 240 monkeys and apes, and the aim is to give them as natural a life as possible. Alison and Jeremy are about to set off on a rescue mission that will bring a new species of primate to monkey world. It's not a long journey, just across the way to Somerset, where we can get uh, hickory, flint and pumpkin, the spider monkey. So, very excited. I um, knew that this might happen, but when we first met the spider monkeys, we had nowhere to put them. But I did have a plan in the back of my mind, so really pleased that the day's come and we can go get the spider monkeys today. It's taken a lot of careful planning to get to this point. Hi, you. I know, I know. Three months ago, Alison rehomed Jethro the Saki monkey at the park. Jethro was living next door to three spider monkeys who'd been rejected by their mothers at birth and were being cared for by Colin and Maria, two former zookeepers. Like Jethro, they needed a new permanent home, but there just wasn't a place for them at the sanctuary. Alison was determined to help them, and since then, the team have been creating a suitable home for the spider monkeys. They required us to get a new enclosure built, um, and it's fantastic and beautiful, and ready to receive the monkeys, so we're going to get them today. The new spider monkey enclosure has been part of a massive renovation project at the Capuchin House. The interior has been completely gutted and rebuilt to make a much lighter, more manageable space. So the staff have been able to free up three bedrooms for the new monkeys. I just didn't know whether you could do a little bit of a loop maybe on that one that goes across. Mm. There's just a few hours to add the final touches before they arrive. It's going to be busy down here because we've already got 60 plus capuchins. Um, but I think they'll fit in well. I'm sure the capuchins will be interested about their new neighbours, um, you know, and we'll be able to just fit the husbandry of those animals around. So it'll be the capuchin team that will be taking care of the spider monkeys. They'll be doing their food preparation. Um, they'll be involved in, in moving them, getting to know them. Um, and I think they'll fit in well down here. They'll have their own new, purpose-built outside enclosure, specifically designed with spider monkeys in mind. We can kid it out for, you know, the natural abilities of, of the species, so looking at the long body length, looking at the prehensile tail, those really long limbs, um, and kitting it out in a way that they'll be free to move about the space. Spider monkeys live in the tropical rainforests of Central and South America, where they're under threat from hunting and deforestation. They live mainly on fruit, leaves, flowers and insects, which they gather high up in the tree canopy. They're very sociable animals, with family groups of up to 35, and their name comes from their very long arms, legs and tail, which make them one of America's largest monkeys. Unusually, they don't have any thumbs, but have evolved with strong, hook-like hands. The move will be difficult for Hickory, Flint and Pumpkin, but staff are doing all they can to make a welcoming home for them. We've put down bedding. Spider monkeys are very keen fruit eaters, so we've put out some nice fruit items for them um, and, and just see how they, they settle in before they meet the animals that they're going to be sharing their home with.
At the Orang Nursery, a special summer treat is being prepared for the gang that will keep them active and cool. Ape size icy delights. In those ice lollies, there is um, strawberries um, and uh, juice. I hope I'm hoping it's really tasty for them. I'm hoping they like it. They will be entertained for, for for ages, that's for sure. The youngsters look on curiously as the lollies are suspended. Oshin's much bigger than the others and always ready to grab some goodies. I think Oshin is pretty likely to at least get one of them down and keep it for herself, but. I'm hoping that it's so big that she's going to get bored of it and then going to give the kid a chance. The youngsters waste no time in getting out to investigate the giant lollipops, but Oshin's even faster to stake a claim on hers. Contented Jolie's taking it slow and making the most of the delicacy. Baby Sylvester's keeping an eye on the others while he works out the best technique. But Oshin's showing no finesse. She just wants to get the ice down as quickly as possible. Oshin is um, trying to bang the ice lolly against the pole. Um, it's proving quite difficult. I thought she was going to do it much more easily, but um, yeah, she's struggling with that, and I'm happy to see that because she's been very active banging it. The exercise is great for Oshin's diet. Linga's fascinated by her antics, but she's keeping a safe distance. Oshin is a very, very intelligent orangutan. Well, she knows much more than the kids do, and uh, it's really good to see her with the others because she uses techniques that the kids haven't seen yet, and they are kind of watching and learning. Novice Jolie's going to need a lot more practice. For once, Oshin's happy to let them all get a share. A few months ago, she wasn't that good. When she had food around, she used to push the kids away, even slap them if, if necessary. And now you can see her playing with the others. She's kind of trying to get the ice lolly for herself, but she, she won't do any harm to the kids, and the kids are not scared of her anymore. The big girl's going for brute force, and her persistence pays off. Full of her newfound generosity, she lets everyone have a bit. While she settles down with the biggest, fruitiest chunk of all. There's plenty to go around. They will still have ice lollies for ages, so that's the main thing, to keep them entertained um, for as long as we can, so they don't get bored. Over in Somerset, Alison and Jeremy have arrived to collect spider monkeys Hickory, Flint and Pumpkin. Owner Colin has them confined in their bedrooms, all ready for the big move. And his wife Maria is inside with them, trying to keep them calm. Before they can start their new lives, the monkeys must first be enticed into a travelling crate. I'll tell you what, if I can coax him up to this end, yeah, which is possible, Jeremy's plan is to get one monkey at a time into the small outside tunnel whilst they line up the box opening with it. Then they can tempt the monkey inside. Simple, but spider monkeys can be very highly strung and Flint has other ideas. No, don't do that, don't do that. OK, go, go, go. Despite his loud complaints, Flint's soon inside. Cool. One down. One down. Okay. Oldest boy Hickory's next into the tunnel. Hello, old man. Where's my broom? But he's even less cooperative than his friend. In the end, Colin gets half into the tunnel himself and uses a sheet of wood to push Hickory back into the crate. There it's a whole lot of fuss and screaming with the spider monkeys, but actually we've got two of the three monkeys boxed up, and I wouldn't exactly say willingly, but they did walk into the box and we didn't have to manhandle them into the box. <coughs> They're leaving no one in doubt about their feelings. The screaming that you hear is that they're actually just angry more than anything that we're 
taking control of what is their home. And I guess that's what a lot of people forget sometimes, is that these zoo enclosures are actually their homes. Um, sorry, are we okay? Yeah. yeah, we're safe. So, time for monkey number three. But Pumpkin has seen what's happened to her friends, and she's having none of it. Come on, then. There's only one solution. Right. Net time. But Nimble Pumpkin's more than a match for Colin. And Jeremy fares no better. Hard to tell who's the most frustrated. But Pumpkin wins the day, so far. Then, inadvertently, Pumpkin goes into the tunnel herself, and it's back to plan A. This time, Pumpkin gives in gracefully and allows herself to be pushed back into the box. Right, ready to go. Three monkeys in the box, not too bad. We'll now have about two hours back to the park, get them settled inside the house, and that'll be enough for them today. So, although, of course, they've got the 60-odd faces of the capuchins who are all going to want to say hello, but... Um, in all at right. the deep end. Welcome to Monkey World. <laughs> yes. Part of Monkey World's mission is to allow primates to live as natural a life as possible in social groups. And that seems to be working well at the capuchin enclosures, where love is in the air. If you want to know if someone does like you and, and maybe wants to hang out and, and have a bit of a play or whatever, flirting is always a good way to start. They'll raise their eyebrows um, and, and do quite a massive grin, some of them, <laughs> and then they will start with the chest rubbing as well. Um, and, you know, if the other animal that they're directing the flirting towards responds in the right kind of way, then they'll get closer and closer and, and, and then it just goes from there. <laughs> Nature's lent a helping hand to some of the troop. Capuchins have got very expressive faces, particularly the tufted guys. That also plays a role because it obviously accentuates the way that they do flirt. And, you know, we've got some very impressive tufts going on in the capuchin section. The nigritus ones like Amy um, and Tao, they've got quite large tufts. Um, and this just all sort of accentuates their whole face. A gentle approach can sometimes do the trick. Some are quite sort of shy and reserved, so when they do flirt, it, it's sort of a, a gentle raising of the eyebrow and, and is quite sort of sweet and shy. But there's no stopping some guys. You do get ones like Donnie who are very over the top and, and you know, the expression on their face is just excited. Um, but, yeah, it's all to do with, I think, personality as well. Tao's group, one lucky boy's got no problem pulling the girls. Tao's got the attention, yeah, of, of Babe and Esther, but, um, and also Debbie, but we've also got Joanne, who's been making a bid, and she's very persistent, really, really wants to get his attention, but unfortunately Tao doesn't want any of it. So she's been told off a few times, but it hasn't really dented any of her enthusiasm, unfortunately. <laughs> If there is a lot of positive interaction and flirting going on, it's only going to help strengthen bonds within the group um, and hopefully we'll have a more cohesive group because of that. And if your flirting technique fails, you just have to think of another way.
two hours after Alison and Jeremy left Somerset with spider monkeys Hickory, Flint and Pumpkin, they arrive back at Monkey World. Previous owners Maria and Colin have also come to help them settle in. Everybody was really quiet the whole way. In fact, I'm stopped and sort of stuck my head in Colin's car at one point in time, and Pumpkin's far more chatty. Two boys have been silent the whole way, so we can only presume all's well in there, but be glad to get them into the house. The three spider monkeys will be sharing a house with 65 capuchins, and they're eager to get a look at the newcomers. Hi, Terry, Terry. Oh, well, look at them all looking. The capuchins are kept outside while the spiders get their first look at their new home. They waste no time in getting out of their traveling crates, and despite the unfamiliar territory, there's none of their earlier tantrums. Excellent. They're a lot more settled than I thought they would be, actually, a lot less. Um, hysterical than, I, than they could, could have been. So now they're doing very well. Naturally, they're a bit bewildered by all the new sights and smells. Spider monkeys are looking great. Fantastic. I know. What are you thinking, pumpkin? Yeah, you're a good girl. Um, so, yeah, I just like to see. I know, I know. See them moving around the bedrooms a little bit more, but ha it's only been the first half hour, so pretty good. It's all going so well, they decide to let the capuchins back inside. It's about to get a whole lot noisier as the nosy neighbors come pouring in for their evening meal. Hickory, Flint and Pumpkin find themselves surrounded by inquisitive, chattering capuchins. They just don't know what to make of it all. But Colin knows them well enough to be convinced it's just a matter of time. Everything's new. They've got all the new monkeys around, which they're not used to. All the different uh, keepers' faces, which they've got to get used to. So there's so much going, going around, and um, they can't really sort of take it in. But give them a couple of days. been a busy day for Jeremy, and it's not over yet. He's got an important job at the Orang Nursery, where it's time for Oshin's regular weigh-in. There's no leaving it to guesswork. She appears to have lost quite a bit more weight, but I often think that, but whenever I get on the scales, it's never, never quite what I think it ought to be. When Oshin was rehomed from South Africa in 2010, she was grossly overweight. Her passion for pastries got her into a lot of trouble, and her owner found it difficult to stop her raiding the kitchen. What do you want? What do you want? I can take your paper and biscuits. Come on, let's go. With little exercise and an unnatural lifestyle, her waistline expanded until she tipped the scales at 100 kilograms. But all that came to an end at Monkey World, where she was put on a strict diet and started playing around with the rest of her group. That did the trick and the kilos came off, but she's still got a way to go. Every way in, the staff have a wager on what she'll be. I reckon somewhere around 65. But hey, I probably I have been wrong before. You might find that unbelievable, but it, it is true. Young Sylvester has played his part in keeping Oshin on the go. But today, they've got to get her on the scales without her sidekick. Hello, gorgeous. Come on. Everywhere Oshin goes, Sylvester goes too. You can sit there. You can sit there. Go on, get on. OK. Right, right, right. Now, you've got to let go of that. Let go. Sylvester's hanging on to the mesh at the moment. Sylvester, <laughs> up here, buddy. All right, Louis, what is it, Louis? No, no, hang on. No, no, she's got hold of him now. He's eventually persuaded away from the scales whilst Lewis reveals the truth. Now, what is she now? 67.8. 60, what about now? 60. <laughs> Tell me when it's 65. <laughs> I'm lifting it up. 
Despite Jeremy's attempts to cook the books, Oshin comes in at under 68 kilos. And while they're about it, they check Sylvester's weight as well. It doesn't take much to get him back on the scales with his protective friend. Now, look, we got polos. <laughs> Good boy, come here. Look, she's, she's letting him smell her breath, so that she... And... Less Oshin's total, he's 10 kilos. No concerns there. No kissing. No kissing. But Oshin's going in the right direction. Well, she's done okay. She hasn't done as well as we thought she had. She's 67.9, so that's that's just over two kilos she's lost, which is which is fine. I mean it's lost. But the thing is, it's not just losing weight, it's also being fit. I think, you know, what we've done, we've we've substituted uh, fat for for muscle and um, she's a lot more flexible than she used to be when you look at her climbing around and, you know, when she's playing and wrestling with the little ones. So, therefore, she's a lot fitter. And that, you know, has got to be a lot more healthy for her generally. Next time on Monkey Life. Two lives at risk when woolly monkey Sarah goes under the knife. Is the baby stuck? Is it in a funny position? Is indeed she pregnant in the first place? And golden cheat Gibbon Tio takes his first wobbly steps, 20 metres high. You feel very much like his protective parent watching him go off. You're like, oh, oh be careful.